Hi everyone, so today I am starting a new upcycling project and I wanted to bring you all along for the journey. So my youngest daughter recently outgrew a shirt that she loves. It is this shirt right here and it has this adorable um, cat face design on it and she looked so cute when she would wear it and she loved it but she has outgrown it. It is just too short for her now. So since she still really loves this shirt and it is still in really good condition, I wanted to figure out a way that I could sort of extend the life of it and uh, a way that she could still get use out of it. So I had it um, sitting around for a little while trying to come up with an idea and finally I thought of making a pinafore dress. And so if you don't know what a pinafore dress is, it's kind of like... Um, the top part of like bib overalls with a skirt bottom um, and so that's the idea that I thought of and use the cat portion here as the front bib of the dress and so hopefully it works I also grabbed a curtain that I thrifted a few months ago I got actually two of them. there's a big thread on it ignore that um, <laughs> I actually got two of these green curtains they're a beautiful shade of dark green um, they were 75% off at the thrift store I can't remember the exact price I paid I think it was somewhere around a dollar fifty for two of them so really really good price and I want to use the two of these together to make a little outfit. The pattern that I chose for this project is McCall's 7459. This is actually the second time that I'll be using this pattern, but I'm going to make some adjustments to it this time. So I'm not using it exactly as it comes originally. Um, I'm going to be altering the shape of a few of the pieces, which I will be showing you how I do that. So the first time that I used this pattern was to make a an overall dress for my oldest daughter and um, it turned out super cute and there I actually copied the original pattern pieces onto just plain tissue paper and the reason for that is the pattern comes in four different sizes it comes in three four five and six and I'm using size four and I might want to make it in a bigger size sometime in the future so I didn't want to ruin the larger sizes by cutting out the one that I needed right now so instead, I just laid tissue paper on top and just traced out the size that I needed and used that instead. And I did go ahead and extend it to one size larger right here and then tapered it out as well as right here. I did one size larger and shifted up the buttonhole to accommodate that. And the reason I did that is my both my kids are in like the 95th percentile for height for their age. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the proportions accommodated that. And so these were what I used the first time. And the only adjustment was changing the height. This time, I'm making some more adjustments. So these are my new pattern pieces. So this is the back of the little outfit right here where it has the um, like triangle bit that the straps attach to. And they kind of almost wrap all the way around the body and kind of meet at the side, um, which is fine. But for this one, I want, that's more of like a pair of overalls is what I picture. But I want this to be more of like a pinafore, like back, you know, 100 years ago or more. Um, so instead of having the pieces meet on the sides, I wanted them slimmed down. So I just copied the same top center fold line and bottom. And then I just tapered the line down to where I felt like it would be a nice size and then I went ahead and copied that 5 8 inch seam marking right here because that's what this is instead of continuing this down to a point they just chop off the 5 8 inch that would like go into the seam allowance and be unnecessary so this is my new back piece that I'll be using and then here is the new front piece I was going to take that extra quarter inch off because I'm making this for my younger daughter who even though she's tall for her age she still is quite a few inches shorter than 
my older daughter but I laid this on the shirt and in order to accommodate the entire design on the front I did still need that extra height and I'm going to have to use even a smaller seam allowance than what I'm supposed to just to ensure that the entire design makes it on the front hopefully it won't end up like looking weirdly proportioned or anything um but there's nothing else I can figure out and still get the whole design on it because the entire design is really cute. Anyway, so in order to make it a little more penafore looking, which it traditionally has more like straighter front sides on the bib, if that makes sense at all. Um, so I just kind of cut off a little bit of the extra here um, where it would kind of like curve out to meet on the sides so I just took that off and then again I copied the same little edging here onto the new line and hopefully this works I am not making a mock-up but I'm pretty confident that those changes that I made are going to be totally fine and um, I'm ready to get started Okay, so as you can see, I have cut the shirt open. I have the front here that is right sides down and I left the sleeves intact. And that's because I'm not sure if I will have to cut just barely into the sleeve to make my pattern piece fit. So just to be on the safe side, I left the sleeves on and then I cut a piece of interfacing that is definitely, um, hopefully, yeah, big enough for my pattern to completely fit on. And I'm going to put it on here and fuse it into place. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure that this fabric does not stretch while I'm working with it. I want it to be nice and stabilized because my other fabric is 100% cotton. This one is, let's see actually 100% cotton. Wow. Okay. Um, but anyway, it has a stretch to it. And um, I don't really want to be dealing with that. So I'm going to interface it to kind of control that so that my fabrics will act more like each other. This is something I do anytime I am like cutting up old clothes like t-shirts or anything or like when I do memory bears I always interface them just because it makes working with them a whole lot easier and as you can see it did not affect the front of the shirt at all so I ended up using chalk to mark this out I originally started with just like school chalk and then remembered that I had bought actual like Taylor's chalk kind of thing a while back that I never use so I use that and I tried to line my pattern up with what I thought was the center of the design which is right here and apparently it's like a quarter inch off center so when I measured from the ear to the edge it didn't line up on each side so I did have to redraw the line okay so I think I have it pretty good so far I just have to remember to cut on the outer line here and on the inner edge here and it should in theory all match up and um, yeah so I'm pretty happy with that I'm gonna get this cut out and then I will probably use this for cutting out the lining just to make sure they match up exactly and then we will go from there I just finished cutting out all of my pieces so I have the front and then the lining for that I also have both back pieces the outer and the lining I have the two strap pieces two waistband pieces and then I did cheat just a little bit and I ended up using the second curtain so that I could cut the skirt pieces using the original curtain hem and this way I don't have to hem the bottom of the dress once I'm done with it so at this point I'm ready to start sewing
It is now day two and I want to give you an update on where I'm at. I have the front piece made. I also have the back piece and straps made. So here's the back piece. I've just got a pen marking which side I want to be the outside as well as the center point. There's the straps, which I did not sew them the way the pattern says because they want you to sew them and then turn them right side out. I don't like doing straps that way because it's hard to turn them right side out. So instead I sew the end, then I, um, tuck in the sides the appropriate seam allowance amount and just top stitch it closed. I have a tote bag tutorial where I did the straps this way that I can try to remember to link to so you can actually see it in action. And then I have that same center back point marked on the waistband here and then I have my other waistband that has been interfaced. That's where I'm at so far. I've also sewn the two skirt panels together and surged the raw edges and now I'm ready to put these pieces on to here. I just finished sewing. Of course the air conditioner comes on right now. Okay, we're gonna power through it. I just finished sewing the zipper and um, it's either my first lapped zipper or my first one in 15 years because I may have sewn one about 15 years ago. I can't remember for sure. Um, it went okay. Like it functions and everything, but I didn't love sewing it in. I actually had to do two rows of stitching here because it had me fold back this side a half inch and this side five eighths inch, I believe it was. And um, I felt like to get the stitching close enough to catch this edge of the seam allowance and not have it be on the zipper tape was like really difficult to do and I was so afraid that I was going to sew cl too close to the zipper tape so I don't know it's probably not a zipper type that I will be using very often unless I do some more practicing and figure out like a secret to it or something but um now I am ready to attach this huge skirt on to this little top here and I'm supposed to do it by gathering the top edge of the skirt, but you know what? I don't like doing that. I'm going to just um, pleat it by hand, I think, and or like kind of gather it by hand as I sew, and I think that'll be just fine. While I am doing this, I did want to talk about what's kind of been on my mind recently. Just kidding, I rambled on for far too long while I was recording this part, so I'm doing a voiceover for it now instead. And so what I've been thinking a lot about is the idea of make do and mend. If you've researched much about life during World War II, you've probably heard this phrase before. And during the war, certain types of fabrics were needed for the war effort, leaving little for the general public to use. So people were encouraged to find ways to repair or get by with what they already had. There's actually a video from the era explaining everything and offering ideas that I will link in the video description box. Obviously in this current day and age, we do not have a clothing or textiles shortage. Really we have an overabundance, but I wanted to challenge myself with the idea of make do and mend to cut back on some of my personal consumption and because I think it forces a person to be more creative and resourceful when less is available. 
this is what really inspired this sewing project. I had the shirt that was still in great condition, and yes, I definitely could have donated it or passed it on to some friends of ours who have kids younger than our kids, but I could also come up with a creative way to extend its life within our own family. And the way I'm making this outfit, I can actually have it grow with my daughter because all of the buttons are adjustable. And also it now works for a lot of different seasons because before it was a long sleeve shirt so she could only wear it when it was cool enough for long sleeve clothing. But now that it's a pinafore dress, she can wear a t-shirt under it, a long sleeve shirt under it, even a sweater underneath it. There is just a lot of different options. So it is far more versatile than it was before. I also saved the ruffle that was around the bottom of the shirt originally because I think it will work perfectly for adding to the bottom of a pair of pants to make them longer for my oldest daughter because she is very, very tall and she outgrows the length of her pants before anything else. And that right there is another make, do, and mend project because I am working with the same pants and supplies that we already have, but I am extending their life even longer for more wearability. I definitely want to keep looking at our clothes through a make, do, and mend lens instead of being in an endless buy, donate, buy, donate cycle. I am so, so happy with how this pinafore dress turned out, and I think all of my alterations to the pattern actually worked out perfectly, which is awesome because when you do alterations to patterns and you don't do a like mock up beforehand. Um, they don't always go perfectly, but this time they did and I could not be happier with it. There is not a single thing that I would change about this project and my daughter loves it. She calls it her cat dress and she's already worn it several times since I got it finished. I hope this video and this project inspire you to think creatively about some of the items that you already own and ways that you can revamp them, make them something different, mend them, just whatever you can do to give them a new life. If you do any make, do, and mend projects of your own, I would love to see pictures, so please share them either on the Whitney Sews Facebook page or on Instagram. You can tag me at Whitney underscore Sews so that I will see them. And until next time, happy sewing! Mm -hmm.